Hello, this is Giovanni. This is tutorial number three. In this tutorial, I'm going to put uh, progressive banking in our track project we're working on. So I'm going to open up the project and uh, I'm going to pull up the edit surface properties window once I have this track placed in a, in a spot where I think it needs to be. And right now, um, I'm going to set each one of these dots to an equidistant apart from each other. And this is to aid in the math that's to follow so we can calculate uh, right angle math. So right now I'm setting each one to 2.5 meters apart from it, the, uh, the previous. Uh, we're going to set the first control point there and or the first dot in our modeled cushion uh, at a 2.5 meter mark as well. And we're going to ignore the cushion modeling and go and set uh, the, the next dot in the line at two and a half meters away from the first one in the modeled cushion just to keep the math the same and we'll worry about remodeling the cushion once we put the progressive bank into the track. So now we have two and a half meters which is approximately eight feet uh, between polygon rows and I'm going to minimize bobs and I have a chart that I made up with each point uh, numbered and showing 2.5 meters going from zero, the first on the inside line, all the way up to 30, which is the very outside point. Uh, and we're going to go through and calculate for different right angles and punch in the y-axis value, which is going to be the height from the ground level that we're going to lift each point down the row. The first two points are going to stay at zero. Um, and then as we go down the row, I'm going to go between 3 degrees up to 6 degrees in banking. And this, this banking, this progressive banking will be applied to the entire track surface without adding any camber through bobs. Now I've opened up a right triangle calculator in uh, Internet Explorer, or excuse me, in Google. And all you need is uh, the angle that you want and the uh, side B, which is going to be the length between points on your track surface properties. And right off the bat, uh, we calculate for 3 degrees and see that our dot needs to be raised 0.13 meters from ground or from the previous dot. So our first dot is at 0.13 y-axis. The one after that is adding another 0.13 to 2.26. Now we're going to calculate for 4 degrees for the next series of dots. And we see that they need to be raised by 0.17 meters. So we take 0.26 and add 0.17 to come up with 0.43, uh, followed by 0 0.60, and now we're going to calculate for 5. So the same number, uh, side B, you can see why I made each one exactly 2.5 meters apart from each other on the x-axis. Calculated for 5 degrees, uh, we now see that we need to raise our y-axis by 0.22 meters. So it's just some simple addition math, and we go all the way up to 6 degrees. And this is the first point in our, at 20 meters on the x-axis, this is the first point in our modeled cushion. So we're going to stop here at, uh, I believe it's 1.30 meters in height. And we're going to go into bobs. We're going to edit the surface and set each one of these points based on our calculations before we continue our math because uh, the height of our cushion is going to change the, uh, the relative distance on the x-axis between uh, the cushion and the next the next dot in line. So you kind of have to calculate that in. But until we have all these lined up and see where our modeled cushion actually ends up on the track on the x-axis, uh, we can't do the math any further. So I'll just bo blow through these. Obviously I have these uh, sped up a little bit in the video. And uh, we'll see what we get here. Now the idea behind the numbers I've used is um, 2.5 meters at approximately 8 feet. That's that's fine for a polygon row around the track. Um, if you wanted to use 2 meters, that's that's fine as well. Just you know, a little little higher polygon concentration. And the progression I'm using uh, is going to have a, a zero degrees of banking right down on the apron, up to uh, six degrees of banking uh, just before the cushion and beyond the cushion out to the wall in the corners. We're going to have that at 6 degrees as well. So you don't lose camber when you get up over the cushion. Now any camber we apply to the track is going to be applied to the entire track surface. 
So uh, if I were to put five degrees of banking in the corners, what we're actually going to end up with is a banking progression that goes from five degrees at the bottom line of the track up to 11 degrees at the wall because we already have a, a zero through six progression. So we'll be adding any camber adjustments to that zero through six. And keep that in mind when you're setting your cambers. So here I'm, I'm setting the last point uh, in the modeled cushion and I'm just looking for a nice uh, uh, a nice number that goes well with the numbers I've already used on the x-axis and the y as well but predominantly the x-axis so I, I think I'm going to go with uh, I think it's 20.75 um, that way we're still dealing with a, a base 5 edition and I don't have to use my brain <laughs> all that all that hard so uh, when we go to calculate side B uh, we go to put in side B in our right angle triangle, uh, tr right angle uh, triangle calculator. Uh, instead of being the 2.5 meter different uh, distance between the two points, it's actually down to 1.75 for this particular measurement from the top of our cushion to the next dot in our track surface. So we still want to have it at six degrees. Um, this tells us we need to raise uh, y by 0.18. So we'll go ahead and do that math. And for the rest of the way, um, all those dots were exactly 2.5 meters apart. So we punch 2.5 into side B, 6 degrees, and we see that we add 0.26 to all of the remaining y-axis numbers. And then we're going to go into Bob's, set the remaining uh, uh, track surface dots to the numbers we just calculated, and we will have a track with uh, progressive banking uh, around the entire lap. So I'll, this isn't sped up I'm actually this fast in this part. <laughs> Here you go. I show you Jordan. Here's some humor in a tutorial. All right. So here we go. Uh, once we're done here, we're gonna see what this thing looks like. We're done doing calculations. Uh, we're done with. You know, uh, and if you don't have Excel, like obviously you can just use a notebook. Uh, you can just write this stuff down. You don't need to, you know, make a chart. I just did that for the tutorial, and because it's a little easier for me to save it and go back and tweak on it um, for different tracks. So here we go. Doesn't look any different in this screen, obviously. However, when we look at the actual track, we can see that now the track has some progressive banking. A little tough to pick up. Uh, one degree differences to the naked eye, which is intentional. Uh, it should be uh, equally imperceivable while driving. Um, you'll 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 notice, but you won't. So let's add some uh, some actual camber values into our track. Uh, we're adding camber points. Um, less is more when you're adding camber points. You want to let the the bobs calculate. Uh, the graduation between camber settings rather than force them. I've made that mistake before and you end up with a fairly lumpy track. Uh, the less camber points that you have uh, on your track, the smoother your transitions are going to be. The computer is smoother than you are, is essentially, or the software can be smoother than you, is what that is. So I've set the apex camber to 4 degrees and left everything else at 0 and I made my transition point uh, at entry and exit of each corner. Now my walls are hidden under the track, but that's an easy fix. Just go into your wall uh, properties and toggle the rest on ground button and that popped the wall up like you just saw. Now because I'm, I budged my my track surface uh, a little wider, I also have to uh, match that by moving the wall out to it. And there you go. I'm gonna toggle rest on ground again just in case moving the wall had any effect there. There you go. You can see you have uh, banking on both ends. But um, I don't love the banking and I also don't love the hard transition uh, between the first and second poly row. Um, going from flat zero to three degrees creates an edge. An edge that you will never see except for your left front if you're running the bottom, but it's an edge nonetheless. So I'm going to go ahead in there and just uh, set that guy to 0 0.06 meters, which is the in-between point on the first and second dot. If you remember, that was 0.13. So, done.
done. That smoothed that transition out, and that makes me happy. And now I see bank that I would like my banking to track a little further down the straightaway, and I'd like it to stay at 4 degrees a little longer than just at apex. So I'm going to move my uh, my, tar my zero camber targets further down the straightaway, which just says that the banking will begin sooner and will end later on entry and exit respectively. I'm also going to add two more camber points, uh, and I'm going to spread them away from apex, and they will both be set to 4 degrees. So that way my track picks up to 4 degrees sooner and stays there a little longer rather than hits 4 degrees right at apex and immediately falls away. Again, less is more. So if you know what you want, make it happen and get out of that screen. <laughs> the more you tinker here, you can you can really lump her up. Um, so that's that. Uh, we're going to have to reset our walls, I think. Yep. Go into properties, uh, toggle rest on ground, get that wall reset. There you go. She's up above ground, and there is our track uh, with a more gradual bank, a bank that stays on the track longer, and uh, a fully progressive bank. So there you go, progressive banking with a modeled cushion and uh, a high saturation polygon count in Bob's Track Builder. It's not that difficult. It hasn't taken that much time. I think it's a total of maybe 30 minutes of tutorials to accomplish. I uh, hope you learned something. If not, I hope it gives you an idea to try something new, experiment, learn some stuff, and share it. Um, have fun building your tracks, and good luck.